win under our children and we help them meet their destiny and that's our job not calling them names oh you know what you should know this by your age you're lazy you're not living up yeah we've been told as children of narcissists we've been told who we are we've been conjoled it's been a combat every day of our little lives. And I want to thank you for listening, because my parents never did. <laughs> that, my childhood was so misinformed, and I had to recreate that hell in order to sink to the very bottom in order to be able to go, wow, I know there's light. I know there's something more than this. There's myself. My goodness, we are so hard on ourselves. Why? Because we had a narc parent. We don't have to be perfect to be loved. We're lovable because God created us. Figure out who you are and then like, be that person. Figure out who you are and fully be that person. And in my AIM system, we assess. You assess where you are and you actually take inventory and you are able to move energy. You're able to integrate and you'll be able to figure out who you are and then do it on purpose. You get to do who you are on purpose. Growing up, you were highly criticized just for being yourself. Growing up, you were highly criticized just for being yourself. And now, as an adult, you walk around with a deep fear of getting things wrong. Because on a core level, You've been conditioned to believe there is something inherently wrong. You've been conditioned to believe there is something inherently wrong with you. The very conditioning that your caregivers gave to you as their child, their vulnerable, open book, ready to be written on the soul of child. recovering who you are because the narcissist is always trying to get you to cover that person up they're so intimidated and we don't get it because we're always trying to be better and we're always trying to improve and i am just now putting myself back together again You've been conditioned to believe there is something inherently wrong with you. And it is precisely that kind of conditioning, the conditioning that makes the child of narcissistic parents believe that in their inherent flaw makes them especially susceptible to narcissistic partners, pathological partners, because when that partner brings up something like, you do this wrong, or you do that, and it makes me feel bad, of course, we will default to our conditioning and find out because we are inherently flawed by our belief system. We believe it when we're in that relationship. We will do whatever it takes to make that narcissist happy again. Well, that's how it, the first cut happens and then it's eventually death by a thousand cuts and you will lose who you are in that relationship and you will be a shadow of yourself, an empty shell, just scooped out and eaten by the insatiable narcissist need to feed off of you. This is a monologue by yours truly.
your favorite narc abuse escapee on the internet. Now, the inner resilience and the uh, inner fortitude you build up is uh, done through sheer willpower. It's also a byproduct of having gone through hell and keep, keeping going right on out of hell. When you're living with a narcissist, it's hard enough. Nobody sees what that person really does to you. They all see the good guy and they think that something is wrong with you because this narcissist has actually been doing what is known as triangulation as well as smear king campaigning. Triangulation is when there are three people that know each other, but the narcissist stays at the top of the pyramid here. He tells me one thing, he tells this person another thing, and then it might be that the narcissist tells the neighbor that I am driving him crazy. And then the neighbor starts treating me like I'm doing something bad to her favorite neighbor. And then that is triangulation. And I'm like, hmm, Michelle's acting rather strange. I don't know what's going on with her. And then he will have said to her that I'm doing something terrible. This is when I lived in Virginia. And then she will treat me badly and, and I will be like, gosh, she's acting kind of standoffish and aloof. I thought we were friends. And in the meantime, he will then say something to her that I said about her. And then she becomes what's known as a flying monkey. A flying monkey is a dupe that does the narcissist bidding unbeknownst to them, they're being played too. But they're not the ones getting hurt. The victim of the narcissist is. Now that I have fully recovered, actually, for the most part I have, I am a narc abuse escapee. But I will tell you, you recover from the relationship and then I, rec I discovered the source was my mother. In 2022, I had a partial ego, ego death. I had a breakdown and you're exhausted and tired because you spent your entire I spent an entire decade of my life uh, fighting for my life with a narcissist in my life without realizing that all of it was what it was because your brain does go into the uh, survival mode so you can only deal with what is right in front of you and you actually do get some brain damage I have that you can repair. Of course, I didn't have the language for it yet. I didn't know exactly what happened. And as um, it, things turned out, I had to find the biggest, baddest, worst daddy of all, which was that last narcissist that brought me to the very bottom pit of despair. I had to get so low, apparently, that I had no other choice but to discover that the source of my issues were from the extreme narcissistic abuse I had as a child. And I became lethargic. And you actually experience a certain amount of self-loathing and self-hatred. Because the parts of you that are loving and wonderful and talented and terrific are overlooked first by the parent and then by the partners. So the inner resilience comes from just sticking it out, hoping one day it will get better. And for me, it got better the day I left but then that's when the work began, the true inner work. If, they're, if they really just don't value you, if they really take you for granted, if they talk over you, if they poo-poo you, if they really think everything that you do is dumb and they mock you, that's the garden variety. 
but the kind I had are the kind that your body actually starts breaking down and you start getting sick and you live in a, an environment in which somebody is willfully throwing anger darts at you, it has an effect on the physical body. If you look into the work of Dr. Masaru Masa Emoto, uh, The Hidden Messages in Water, it is shown that if you love the water, the crystals made from it are perfect snowflakes. And if you send the water anger, it will be fragmented and broken. And her resilience and her fortitude, commenters on YouTube, I had a commenter that blamed me for triangulation. I listened to the video. There was absolutely no triangulation at all. So what you look out for when you are a vulnerable, freshly escaped from narcissistic abuse, narc abuse escapee, is for people to use these buzzwords against you. Never try to convince somebody who's never had that difficulty that you have had about what you've experienced. It'll talk your power away. It's a way of depleting your own inner power by explaining yourself to people. I moved to Virginia and the man lied about everything, including the, the fact that I gave him $20,000 by way of paying off credit cards so we could buy a house together because he love bombed me when I met him and we were gonna buy a house together. He bought the house. He bought a new truck, all because he had $20,000 wiped off on his uh, debt. I wanted to believe he was really gonna change. He really saw the light. He really saw my value. No, no, that's future faking. So the self-loathing comes from, I did it again, I failed again, I was duped again, I believed his bull crap again. Why did I? But you gotta look at the upside. I exercised the ability to love. I, ex I, I demonstrated the ability to forgive. I demonstrated the ability to wipe the slate clean and start afresh and new to see, oh, maybe there is something there for us. And then I thought, oh, we had a garden together, which I loved. And again, narcissists aren't always these awful people. They can be these fun people, but that fun person becomes a smaller and smaller percentage of the time you experience them. The love bombing stage, they keep it up. And then as soon as they ensnare you and you're just so engulfed with your dopamine and your uh, ox orgasm drug, you know, <laughs> the, the big O, oh, oh boy, that you uh, are blind. This love is blind, Man. oxytocin, whatever it is that makes you feel really good. Ah, <sighs> so after being degraded by the narcissist to my face, after having flying monkeys uh, actually sneer at me, call me a bitch, call me a bitch, and having people who I didn't know constantly drunk and sleeping over the house, having no ability to have firm boundaries with the narc partner, almost losing my health, almost losing my life, losing my brain capacity from head trauma. I have a lot of inner fortitude. I've been through hell. I kept on going and now I'm not in hell anymore. I'm so sure of myself and who I am. The ability to communicate uh, to, I, I've developed relationships where people listen to you. Wow, imagine that. I'm having emotions of all kinds, which is energy and motion. Our emotions, including anger, when it's justifiable anger, when it's righteous anger, when it's Jesus anger, it's powerful. My friends, 
Do you want to know what the opposite of love is? It's not hate, it's indifference. And not knowing what a female narcissist is other than my own mother, I really don't know how to tell you about them. I hadn't mastered the full knowing of why I was such a vulnerable target to narcissist because I hadn't realized it was with my mother. And of course I had to sink to the very bottom and I had to go through the biggest war of my life. And so after you do that, I'm akin to an Olympic athlete. I'm a professional. I've had three types of narcissists, a narcissistic mother, and a narcissistic counselor without recognizing what any of them were. And so that all of us who have had a difficult relationship with toxic um, partners due to probably a tragic childhood of trauma and uh, basically conditional love, due to those things, we attracted what I call a trauma bond. And it's that jag that you get, which is the arousal jag that comes through having a familiar energetic pattern that comes through the partner. And in my case, it was a traditional love and how, excuse me, conditional love and how it was so familiar to the love I received from my mother, which was none until she made me cry and then she would give it to me because that meant she had power over me. And so men in my life have modeled that and so I was addicted to them. I take full responsibility. I've kicked the habit. And this is the new stuff I go walking in. <laughs> so cheers to that. Love you all. And do not let anybody else define you. You have your own inner authority. The conversation begins with yourself, the positive self image that you have every single day greeting yourself, loving yourself, positive messages. Yeah. The emotions, very healthy to have. Very. Yeah. Have those emotions. Self-acceptance and self-love, you got to cultivate those. And learning that you don't have to answer to anybody and your own inner authority is good enough. So when you're piecing yourself back together again, when you're really looking into yourself, you're gonna learn about your inner authority because your inner authority was always degraded by your birth parents. You only had an outer authority because the inner authority was never developed. We're gonna develop that. We're gonna talk about Erickson's stages of childhood development so that our arrested development can be developed. We are repairing ourselves. Remember that, and you become ever more beautiful in the art of spiritual kitsungi, the art of self-repair, picking up the pieces of your dashed dreams and shattered life. You, my friend, are a superpower because you are narc abuse escapee. I'm looking at ways to actually navigate your own life's journey and path now that you know what's happened to you. Piecing yourself back together again and then delighting in the pieces. And when you put it back together with gold and you put it back together with stories. So I'm grateful for the ability to love, to express love, to feel love, to feel joy, to have that feeling in a healthy body. Our bodies are the drug. So these feelings can be felt and they're expressed within the body like a trill. So we do that on purpose. I'm thinking, 
Learning the conversational art again. Conversation. That's nothing you'll ever have with a narcissist. A conversation, a give and take conversation in which you talk to this individual and express your thoughts. So learning the art of conversation after being shut down by a narcissist the entire duration of the relationship, relationship. <laughs> learning the art of conversation is actually delightful, especially also having been shut down as a child. In fact, the television set, the TV programming, the tell lie, and then you vision it, that had a seat at the table. And I was shushed so that my mother could be informed about what was really happening. Who cares what's happening with her child and her child's life? So the art of conversation is delightful. And to converse, those are the wonderful things that people in narcissistic relationships don't have. You don't have a conversation with these people. They're confrontational personality types. So the closest thing you'll have to a conversation with them is them dictating to you so that you're part of the decision making. <laughs> and that's the only part you'll be listening to what them, what they are telling you is going to happen in your lives together. That's why flying solo is so wonderful. It's a loving opportunity to really love yourself, to pick up the pieces of who you really are, those pieces that were lost in your childhood, because this is specifically to, to those individuals such as myself who actually lived through childhood hell and then got out of it only to attract narcissists because we didn't know what energy was. We didn't know we resonated to the key of N. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So now we're not anymore. And the only N we use is when it's followed by a O. And we love that word no. It's our favorite word, isn't it? Learning to actually have verbal conversations. Learning actually to use words. But to choose to be can to have an inner life and cultivate that. And I am just now putting myself back together again. That essentially is repairing the damage, making yourself stronger and more beautiful because of the weakness perceived or not. The bowl was weak because it couldn't withstand the impact of the hard floor is one way of looking at it. Or the bowl withstood the hard floor and the pieces are perfect so we can put them back together again with gold. So it's how you look at yourself, how you're going to reconstruct yourself. Because again, uh, in other videos subsequent to this prior, I mean, I'm looking at ways to actually navigate your own life's journey and path now that you know what's happened to you. You know how you've been duped. You know you've been with narcissistic partners. You know where it lies. You know that you had a toxic family structure. You see the conditioning that you had. And then you can allow and forgive people, but know what you're dealing with. And then you've got to clear out the grief of your, your body every single day and piece yourself together. <laughs> so cheers to that. This is what I've discovered as part of the art of Kintsugi, is that you're not damaged forever. You're changed forever. The narcissist did not damage you forever. You're changed forever. What you felt was their pain. What you felt was their pain. What you felt was their pain. Not only do you stand up to say no to the abuse, you then are accused of being a bad person because you said no. And what's wrong with me for leaving this relationship it wasn't so bad it didn't matter that they didn't listen to you it didn't matter they criticized you because they didn't feel loved enough by you it didn't feel, it didn't matter the other restrictions that this person placed on you meanwhile you're criticized you're ridiculed you're looked down upon you're frowned upon you're treated like a chore for existing
never gave him compliments, treated like she was a nuisance. Your very existence is enough to piss them off. <laughs> oh my God. So when the fantasy mind wants to say, oh, you could have just dealt with it. You could have taken it on the chin. No. Oh my God. Okay. I was going to make a message to, um, message to women who were dating online. They're all leftovers. <laughs> My videos aren't always planned out. They're used as my sounding board because a lot of the material is really good for writing an essay. So look for the blog post at some point in time. So, okay, this is the message to men, the leftovers online that are scavenging the, the, the uh, bottom of the barrel for women who are more desperate than they are. Women of substance will not be pressured into sex. Your penis really isn't as fascinating or as important to us as it is to you, okay? Blowjobs, okay, they're something you pay whores to do. That's why they're called jobs. Hello? Blowjob, it says it right there in the name. <laughs> okay, please, no cologne is disgusting. All right, porn has ruined you guys. We are women. And you guys surmise that we're crazy. And we surmise that you're pent up, frustrated, horny bastards that just look at us as objects of their own erection. But yeah, um, men don't understand that porn is not what women do for sex. That's not what they like. Just sticking it in is never gonna do anything for us. And um, foreplay is important. It's pleasurable. And if you can't do that, you can't have intimacy and you're not worth being in a relationship with. And why we would even get to this place was because we actually had a relationship. Otherwise, you just want to fuck us. Uh, yeah, so I think we're pretty much done. <laughs> I'm pretty much done. I, I... You, the narc abuse escapee, steps into the glory of your God-given life and you become ever more beautiful in the art of spiritual kitsune, the art of self-repair, picking up the pieces of your dashed dreams and shattered life. You, my friend, are a superpower because you are narc abuse escapee. Hell hath no fury like a narcissist scorned. And remember, in the art of Kitsugi, narcs are damaged goods forever. But you, my friend, are not. Your very existence is enough to piss them off. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> now that you no longer have this narcissist in your life, constantly making you jump through hoops, by their very presence, by the way they walk in the room, the way they shout your name while they enter the house. I sure do have some good stories. Bottom line, I'm living a different life now. I'm aligning myself to a different set of stars. And just because I don't have that partner does not mean a life is not worth living. In fact, oftentimes a partnership can slow down that person's life. And so I must surrender to a power greater than mine, just like the people in AA. I surrender my power to what my true blueprint is and was intended before, yes, it was derailed by a narcissistic partner. And so I'm gonna live in the maybes. Maybe being single is exactly where I need to be. And maybe it's the life designed just for me. And so that all of us who have had 
a difficult relationship with toxic um, partners due to probably a tragic childhood of trauma and uh, basically conditional love. Due to those things, we attracted what I call a trauma bond. And it's that jag that you get, which is the arousal jag that comes through having a familiar energetic pattern that comes through the partner. And in my case, it was a traditional love and how, excuse me, conditional love and how it was so familiar to the love I received from my mother, which was none until she made me cry and then she would give it to me because that meant she had power over me. And so men in my life have modeled that. And so I was addicted to them. I take full responsibility. I've kicked the habit. And this is the new stuff I go walking in. <laughs> Enjoy this God-given gift we have called life. And in spite of all the narcissistic abuse, in fact, maybe because of it, the simplest things bring such joy to my heart. And yes, after a woman has been through the hardships of being with a man that's hard on her, unnecessarily, she doesn't harden her heart. She closes it to individuals who are undeserving of her time and attention. And the other thing she does, or he, you know who you are, you bring into your life that which breathes life into you, that which you are excited about and you feel passionate about. Peace and love to you all.